Hey, this is Max from FL Studio Tips and today I will share with you 7 essential mixing tricks. Alright, so first trick is about having the full mix spectrum filled during our song. By full, I mean every of those parts. Sometimes you feel like you're having not full enough song and that can be the issue. So check if you're having the full mix spectrum field and I have a couple of examples for that. Here the difference between this and this. You may not see this on the spectrum here, but you can clearly hear the difference. For example here. It could be like this, but if we add the filters and crushes I've made, it's clearly more full. And as for high frequencies, down filters and exhaust like this, also crushes, can work on the higher frequencies, you need to remember of having also the mid frequencies and the bass frequencies as well as sub frequencies filled. Let's hear the difference if you have the drop of the song without the bass frequencies. I'm lacking this spectrum here and hear what happens if I turn them on. And that happens when you have no bass frequencies in your song. With no doubt, it's getting way more full. Same thing happens when we get rid of the noise and the crash. What you need to note is that every instrument should have its own place in the mix. At the same time, keep away from putting too many sounds so the mix don't get messy. I've prepared for you free infographic of human hearing range with tricks and hacks for every section of the frequency spectrum. Free download, link in description. Same thing here. With Crash. And as you can hear, we're missing those frequencies here. So if we turn them up, it starts to get way more full. Next tip is about making the instruments less present in the mix. Not everything can be equally audible. Your audience needs something to focus on. Here everything seems okay, but if we go to this ARP, you can see that this peak is getting way higher than we would like it to go and you probably already know that the reason for some instrument to be less or more present in the mix is first off the volume. So we could get rid of the gain here but we lose it, we lose it in the mix and I really want this sparkle, this ambience that this ARP gives us. So what we do is go in the limiter to the ceiling knob and as you can hear we cannot focus on this ARP anymore since it's too in the background. So we made our instrument more in background by using compression and something that makes our sounds more in background is also low pass. Keep in mind that it doesn't apply only to ARPs, but to chords, to pianos, to drums, to practically everything. Also here for example with this piano. You can hear that it's getting way too loud and if you would like to apply some vocals for example on this track, it would be really hard to get our vocal over the piano if we don't use this trick. Also in this example here I have an ARP which is going with the lead and when the lead goes down with the low pass, the low pass opens in the ARP.
That way you can introduce listener a new instrument after the one that they were focused on goes out. Next tip is about being unafraid of tweaking the panning knob. Panning is the reason why we think that our mix is white. Let's take for example this sample. If you go into pre-compute effects, you will see the stereo delay, which increased a little will make your sound a tone wider. Also with, for example, this clap, and this tambourine, for example. Also, what you can do is open native plugin of Alpha Studio, which is Fruity Stereo Enhancer. Here you have software version of this stereo delay. Extra pro tip from me is to pack up your background of your job, for example, with crushes. It can be the same crush, for example, go into the sampler, increase the in knob so it's softer, go into the pan knob, pan it left, for example, take the volume down, pitch it up or even higher and now go duplicate it and make it unique. Now take the pitch even higher and change the pan. Now hear what happens. In the mix it can really really improve your stereo wideness. This is really subtle, but if you pack your song out with those crushes, it will be a total changer for your track. Alright, next tip can seem to be really easy, but it's super important. Overall, it's about high-passing everything other than the things that we don't want to high-pass. For example, the kick and bass. Let's start with an example. You can see that here we're having a lot of low end that we don't necessarily hear, but we can clearly see that here is something going on. So what we do is just choose the low pass here by going, by scrolling down and changing it to maybe more harsh one by taking those three dots down. We have lead sound here, so we don't really need anything below 200 Hz. and you need to do it to every instrument that, as I've said, don't necessarily need it. So here, for example, we have chords. And you can see that if I boost it, it's really messy here. And that's about it. If you have one instrument with that amount of spare low end, it's all right. But if we have 10 of them, it's going to destroy your mix. So what we do is just low cut. If you haven't already applied it to everything in your recent mix, go and do it now and hear how better your mix is gonna be. Let me sing for you. Next tip is gonna be really hard to apply and I rarely see people doing it. If you do it, let me know in the comment, but it's about making your track fully in mono to listen what is going on in the mix. Let me sing for you. Overall concept is about hearing what's missing after we turn it into mono. As you may know, most of the phone speakers, for example, are in mono. So if somebody is going to listen to your track, make sure that it sounds good in the mono. That's why we do all this kind of phone tests or car tests, etc. For me, you can hear that I'm missing the lead sounds. Let me sing for you. Which are in the mix fully in stereo. So I would probably need to go into my lead sounds and try to fix them so they are more audible in mono system. Following tip is most important of those all and it's volume balance. The key for good mixes is the volume with no doubt and I think every one of you can agree with that. But we need to have it on our mixing list at the first place. 
I don't do nothing and listen what's the difference between only unbalanced mix in volume and balanced one. And let's balance it and hear how it sounds now. And that's just matter of volume, nothing else. If your sounds are balanced, your mix is halfway done. So make sure to take breaks and listen closely what is too loud, what should be taken down or what should be boosted. The final one we don't appreciate until we try it ourselves. And I'm talking from my experience. So if you really, really want to get to the next level, first thing is of course to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And the second is to use reference tracks. At some point of your music production journey, you will be able to reference to some track, analyze and hear what your track is missing from the one you're referencing to. To show you how I would go over this topic, let's come back to the previous Progressive House example we had and I inserted one track that is very similar to the one I'm working on, for example, and we find that both drops of the song, the best it will be if both songs were in the same key, but it doesn't have to be. So the best thing would be if we had the mixed version, not mastered, since the track we are working on isn't mastered yet. So what we could do is find on Google some tracks in our style which are mixed and unmastered, but if you don't wanna do it, just reference to the mastered song. Also, you can master your song and then reference to it. That's also a solution. First thing will be to match the volume of both songs and then mute one that we've inserted. Thank you. And with control and left click, enable the reference track. And that's how you could do it. And then you just analyze what is missing in your track. But to do all of this, you need some experience in music production. And that's why we've created full length start to finish course especially for FL Studio users. It's over four hours long and covers topics from ultra beginner to intermediate, including sound design, mixing and mastering, arrangement, and of course, vocal production. If you're interested, check out the link in the description below. And that's it guys. Thank you for watching. If you want more, make sure to leave a comment. Also, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really, really helps us grow. And yeah, see you soon in the next video. You got me high.